Hi guys, it's Mike here from KS Bushcraft Down Under. Well, there's a storm raging outside at the moment. I don't know if you can hear it in the background. So, a perfect morning for a knife review. So, got this uh, BK62 um, from uh, K Bar Knives. Now, this is a made in the USA knife. So, it comes in this box, got an outer sleeve. It mentions Ethan Becker, the designer. Now this is the Horace Keppard design, which they recreated. So there's a nice looking leather sheath. Stamp made in the USA. There's the blade, protective sleeve, spear point knife. Nice size. I'm so happy about that. That's prayer. So it's a real tool knife. So for those that don't know, Horace Keppard was an outdoors writer at the turn of the century in North America. And I quite like his style of writing, a lot of it's still relevant today. So he wouldn't have never used a knife to baton down big chunks of wood. He would have had a hatchet, okay? So keeping that in mind, this is a, a camp knife. Platt grind, so it's gonna be a really good slicey knife. The spear point is in line with the handle, so it'll do things like bow drill divots really well. So we'll get the specs out of the way first. So on my scales, the whole set, knife and sheath, 235 grams, sheath alone 63, knife 165. So there's about a 60 mil loop on the sheath. It's just a um, push in, there's no snaps or clips. I quite like this. The leather, it's hard to measure leather, it's about 3.3 mm thick. So, for a, an off-the-shelf sheath, it's pretty good. I mean, you could probably get better. So this is one I've got for my Mora Garberg. It's custom made by Getty Leather here in Australia. So, put a lot more money. So, overall length, I get 245 millimeters from tip to tail. The web says 24.45 um, centimeters, that's bang on, 9.58 inches. The web says uh, 13 uh, centimeter blade. I don't know where they got that number from. So what I did, I measured from tip to the start of this swage here, choil. And I measured from along there, I don't know if they're measuring along there or to the top of the handle or whatever. So, a fair bit of blade, in comparison, there's my Mora Garberg. So, originally he did a 5 inch, which would be this, and a 4 inch version as well. I think I might like the 4 inch better. Blade thickness now, the, the blade stock is, is tapered in both directions. This is obviously for balance. There's no other reason you'd do that. So up here, before the flat grind, I get 3.8 mil and 3.6. So, flat grind with a secondary edge. So, pretty slicey. Now it's got a satin finish on it and a 20 degree secondary sharp. Now it feels gritty. Okay. It's sharp. So it's shaving sharp straight out of the bat. But when I run it across, I can feel it's been sharpened on a belt. Okay. So, 1095 Crowband. Now, there's a lot of steel snobs out there. But 1095, it's a proven steel. It heat treats really well. Now, I couldn't find a figure for the heat treat on this here. Yeah. Now, this is much easier to sharpen in the field than my Mora Garberg. Okay. Now, this is a Scandi grind. Now, bush crafters love Scandi grinds. Now, the reason that, for that is if you're processing a lot of green wood, this shoulder actually does a fair bit of the work because as you're splitting down, it's not the edge which is opening up the timber, it's this swedge. It's like an axe head. Yeah? So, if you're processing you know, green timber in a wet environment, I would go this every day of the week. Okay. 
1095. If you look after this, you will get a lifetime's worth of use out of it. Clean, dry, and a bit of oil now and again. You'll have no problems with it. And you'll be able to sharpen this, even if you're not that experienced, with a um, like an axe puck, something simple like that. 20 degrees, that's about that. It's not much. It's almost laying it flat on the stone and just kicking up a little bit will do you a good job. Now, I've taken a picture of this under the magnifying glass and I, I can tell you straight off it's be sharp on the belt. But for a factory edge I've seen far worse. I reckon a little a few drops on a steel will smooth that out nicely. The Scarberg's still got a factory edge. Yeah, well, it's probably comparable. That's a much thicker blade there. So, as in combos, that's, this one's 100 grams lighter and it's got a, little, a bit more reach on the blade than my yeah, combo. So wooden handles now. Originally, they would be that would have been pinned together with probably brass pins. They've used Allen headed bolts and nuts. So there are other handles available apparently. But that is definitely proud. That's for sure. Yeah, there's about half a thread too much on that one. That one's catching as well. And that one's not. So the two ones your hands closest to. Slightly proud. So whether I take that out, take a bit off that bolt, then I'll have to repaint it. Something we to think of. Now the spine is not sharp. In Horace's day there was no fire steels as we know them today. Now 1095 with a piece of flint. That'll produce sparks, that's for sure it will. It doesn't look anything, but I really do like it. And even with man paws, it's pretty comfortable. Apart from where it bites your finger. Balance point about there. Now, what guys get wrong when they get a like a seven inch blade and a five inch handle is it's you're working against it's like seesaws. Yeah, it makes it hard work. You can be able to use this all day long without causing you any dramas. So, yeah, bit strop and sort that out. That'll get on my nerves, some shopping. And I think it's a pretty good for, for its price point. Now, I did have a, a Bark River one on order, and then it was from an on seller who, when I, when I clicked the pay button, they said they had one, then they didn't. And three months later, they still didn't. So I cancelled that order and got a much, this was much, much cheaper. So for a camp knife, this has got a lot going for me because you'll process more vegetables and food and all that type of things. It'll make feather sticks. It'll do all of those tasks really well. And due to the geometry of this blade, you get more cutting surface as well. So I think it's going to be a great camp knife, guys. I really do. And I'd like to see in the, like the final fit and finish a little better, but I mean, it's a tool. It's absolutely a working tool, this knife. So guys, I shall, uh, I shall get into it and see what I can do about that. And that. That was alright. And we'll get back here. <laughs> Okay guys, when I put the Allen key on now it's 332nd hex. So I expected it to be metric, but it wasn't. So it was the old AF pattern. So these were not tight. Okay. So I just nipped it up a little bit, I don't know if the camera can appreciate that. Now it's about a thread and a half and well and truly proud of the handle. Okay. So whether the guy assembling this backed these screws off so it didn't stick out or Maybe the wood handle was shrunk in storage. Either, I mean, wood's a natural material, but this walnut's pretty tough stuff. So, yes. So, I'm going to disassemble this. 
so I can oil stone down these threads a little bit and we'll have a look. Right guys, so I've got the handles off. I don't know why it's got an additional hole here, maybe it was for each end for a jig possibly to line them up for drilling. But certainly there. It's pretty straightforward stuff. So I've kept these bolts in order and I'll do them one at a time. So there's the there's the tangy, you can see the taper on it. So maybe they've used the same size bolt. And why is this one sticking out the most? You would think that would be the other way around. So anyway, I'll keep them all in correct order. And what I'll do, I'll put the nut back on the screw, then I'll get it out to the oil stone. That way when I loosen it, I'll chase the, the thread clean. If I just buzz it on the stone, I'll have a hell of a time starting the, um, the nut again. So I'll put the nut on first. Like that, and that way when I unwind it, I'll clear the lead of the thread. It's a really tiny little bolt, so I can't hand fold it like I would with a large bolt. Right, guys, I've given the handle some raw linseed, or I might as well while I've got them off, and then we'll see if they swell it at all. So, if you've been having a look, I've been lapping these bolts down. They do have a really narky edge where they've been cut off. So by leveling that off smooth, it'll be a lot better. And I'll see how much, I'll just go slow and steady. I was going to use the uh, grinder wheel, but I'll just do it on the lapstone and keep test fitting them until I'm, I'm happy with it. Even if it's a fraction proud, as long as it's not proud of the handle, I can, uh, I'll be happy with that. So bolt on the nut, I can feel it, how rough it is here. That shows you the, the high points there. Right guys, so I lapped all the uh, the bolts down. I did them all so it was consistent. I could have got away with not doing this one, but oh, that's so much better. Bit of raw lead and seed on the walnut. Yeah, that's turned out well. So since I had the oil stone out, I didn't bother getting my uh, sharpening system out. It's, it is sharp, it just got that belt edge. So I've given it a few uh, a few strokes, only three on each side on my Arkansas stone. I can still see a, a few belt marks, but oh, I feel so much nicer. Yeah, that's much better. So, same about these pins. I mean, I'm sure that's a quality control issue, but anyway, we've sorted it. Anyway guys, if you like this type of content, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. And I'll do a separate video using this around camp. I think it deserves that.